For the Daily Radio News on 94.3 WKUF in Flint, I'm David Jackson for Monday, June 13, 2016. The city of Flint on Friday activated a new chlorine feed system at the city's water treatment plant. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency officials insisted in a letter to the city last week that the new equipment must be installed by Friday. The new equipment is designed to supplement chlorine levels already added by the Detroit Water Authority and is intended to assist in preventing bacteria growing in the water system. According to officials, bacteria such as Legionella is more likely to grow in the warm summer months and the ability to elevate sodium hypochlorite in the city water system could prevent an outbreak. Flint Utilities Director Joe Lisa McDay, after saying last week that the city would not be rushed into installing the equipment, said in a press release last Friday that the system was completed before noon, tested, and is expected to be fully operational today. According to an Orlando PD press release, an Orlando police officer working extra duty at an Orlando nightclub responded to shots being fired at around 2 a.m. Sunday morning at the same club. The officer reportedly exchanged gunfire with a suspect, after which the scene turned into a hostage situation. According to the press release, at 5 a.m., the decision was made to breach the club in order to free the hostages, at which time law enforcement officers killed a suspect. Police report that a total of 50 people were killed and an additional 53 were injured in the crime. Law enforcement is still investigating this crime, and when further details are available, a follow-up will be made. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency is seeking to have warrantless access to patient records. According to the DailyBeast.com, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is hearing a case between the state of Utah and the DEA. According to the original case, the state of Oregon brought suit against the U.S. DEA after the federal administration accessed medical records in Utah's prescription drug monitoring program database with only an administrative subpoena, which requires no probable cause. Oregon sued the DEA to prevent the law enforcement agency from accessing the data without a proper subpoena, and in 2014, the U.S. District Court found in favor of the state, ruling that prescription data is covered by the Fourth Amendment's protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. The Obama administration, however, appealed the ruling, saying that the data is considered to have already been submitted to a third party, which is a provision that reclassifies private data to have no reasonable expectation of privacy. Michigan currently has the Michigan Automated Prescription Service that purportedly stores the same information, and according to state law, health professionals and law enforcement agencies have access to the database. What is being argued in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is whether or not law enforcement can have unlimited access to the databases to be able to, in some cases, use a dragnet approach to investigating a crime. Google on Friday announced that they support the secretive Trans-Pacific Partnership, In a press release, Google supported the alleged advantages of the international trade agreement, saying that the treaty would provide strong copyright protections, make it more difficult for signatory countries to block Internet sites, and limit government's ability to demand access to encryption keys. Google openly admits that the agreement is not perfect, and Google says that they hope that it can be fixed before implementation. The Electronic Frontier Foundation, on the other hand, an Internet watchdog group, openly decries the secretive and multinational trade agreement, saying that it will create a new threat against journalists and whistleblowers, would restrict intellectual property rights, and enforce digital policies in favor of multinational corporations. In sports, the Tigers won twice in their three-game series against the New York Yankees this weekend. On Friday, Detroit left 13 on base in their 4-0 loss. On Saturday, Justin Verlander held the Yankees to one run, five hits, and a walk. But Detroit's 6-1 win was thanks to Ian Kinsler, who drove in six runs, which included a three-run homer in the fifth. On Sunday, Detroit rookie Michael Fulmer added six more scoreless innings to his 28-inning streak. Once again, Ian Kinsler sealed the win yesterday with a two-run homer in the seventh, and Cabrera got his 2400th hit in his 2000th career game. Tigers beat the Yankees 4-1, putting them in second place along with the Kansas City Royals, just three games behind the first-place Cleveland Indians. The Tigers play tonight in Chicago against the White Sox at 8:10 Eastern. In the NBA Finals, the Golden State Warriors won Game 4, 108-97 on Friday. And over the weekend, Cleveland coach Tyron Liu was fined $25,000 for criticizing the officiating of Game 4, and Golden State forward Draymond Green was suspended from playing for Game 5 due to a flagrant foul against Cleveland forward LeBron James. The Warriors are up three games to one, and the Game 5 tip-off is scheduled for nine tonight. And for the second time in seven years, Sidney Crosby hoisted Lord Stanley's Cup last night after the Pittsburgh Penguins beat the San Jose Sharks 3-1. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.